Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Pete and Jeremy's D&D Time. This is uh, game two of tonight's episode 73. I'm pretty stoked for it, and I hope you are, too. We have a fantastic cast of characters together to play this pretty silly adventure I have entitled Boulder Dash. Uh, and let's just take a minute and introduce them real quick. Uh, though, for those of you who've been following D&D Time, they need no introduction. We're going to do it anyway. Uh, Nigel Estrada. The Dread Emperor. Nigel, how are you doing? Ah, uh, yes, I'm doing quite well, Jeremy. I've been yeah. a bit busy as of late, but with the whole Ronin's down of last week, I suppose I owe it to Bartholomew to make another... Now, Nigel, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, how busy have you been? What have you been up to? I know it's been a bit bit hectic with, like, the Nightmare Court and all the, all the Carnival of Souls stuff, but... Besides that, what you been up to? I mean, it's only been like a couple days. <laughs> I've been working on a project of mine. Though it's been quite hectic splitting my time between uh, working Lemonade and this, it's shown to be quite profitable. Yeah, Have... so, so, oh, so, go ahead. I was going to say, so the Dread Emperor, does the Emperor part refer to your Empire of Lemonade? Not exactly. I am merely what one might consider a, uh, board member. A board? Oh no. You're more evil than any other other entity in the entire land of D&D time. Oh, if you think a board member is evil, you'll surely be interested in my latest prospects. Please. I've been seeking out to begin mustering a bit of a union contract, you see. I've heard a bit of... Unrest has befallen a certain kingdom, and what can I say except I have a very good deal for such poor souls. You sound a little bit like a devil there, Nichelle. <laughs> Perhaps in time. <laughs> well, well, Nichelle, um, I'm sure every once in a while you need a break from all of the, the union organization and the lemonade stand running. I know Central City can be pretty crazy. Uh, so I'm glad you're on this silly little uh, little side break, this little tangent. Maybe you earn some more bucks on the side. Uh, I hope you have a good time. I believe I shall. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, next tonight, we have Sword Co here. Uh, Sword, you have chosen to take no title, but uh, you're surely not the first and not the last. Sword, how are you doing? Well, I'm surprised I'm second in line today. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's pretty pretty crazy. Well, of course, considering last week. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, how did next? How did last week treat you, Sword? I don't know. I remember getting into a fight with a guy with a shotgun, and it just kind of went black after about five or six. Mm hmm. That's weird. So, Sword. I mean, obviously, you've heard about all of the other chaos that happened that evening. I'm sure. And obviously the, the events of that whole night are uh, fresh in everyone's mind here in the land of D&D time. But, uh, you know, since you, you woke up the next morning at your home, not actually in Bartholomew's shop or anything, um, has anything, like, changed? Has anything been different for you? Or has it just kind of been just a normal day? Well, I guess things would be considered normal, considering I've been stuck in Central City for the last three weeks. Oh, no, it's not still stuck in Central City. Oh, that's probably where your hotel was, because you're not from around here, right, Sword? You're just here exploring the world of D&D time, right? Indeed. Man, that, that's, uh, the traffic in Central City is real bad this time of year. With all the conventions going on and everything, it's crazy. Oh, Lord, and there's no, there's no detailed map, and it's... Yeah, no, it's absurd. So many one ways. they'd have made a map by now. Dude, the place keeps growing. It's <laughs> always getting bigger. Well, Sword, uh, welcome back. I'm glad you found your way back to Bartholomew's shop, um, and I hope you have a great adventure this evening. Uh, here's to hoping. Here's to hoping. Uh, third tonight, we have Jenny Gallinodal, uh, Who? protector. What? Jenny, you. Oh, yeah. Hey. Jenny, how are you? I'm doing fine, thanks. Yeah, so uh, how have how have you been doing since you woke up in your in your home uh, after you the mean events? Since of... I died. 
Did you die? I don't. I don't remember. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> well, Jenny, I'm sure. Uh, Jenny, you're not going to be like your sister, right? Well, I mean, it's not like our father has a big board called the Board of Shame, where he marks down all of our names and puts a tally every time we die. No, that's... Mm. Yikes. Who's, who's got the leaderboard there? Who's number one? Who do you think is number one? I, is it Switch? Or is it, no, or is it Switch, you? Switch has died once. I've died once. Uh-oh. It's, it's Sarah. Yeah, she isn't too happy right now. Yeah, well, you know what? It's okay. Sarah's not here. Uh, well, Jenny, uh, I'm sorry Are you to sure hear... about that, Jeremy? Look behind you. I can I can see behind me on the... Oh, let me move my head. Yeah, no, we're good. We're good. We're all good still. Uh, wait, she appears on cameras, right? Yeah, no, she, she's not here. Okay. Anyway, Jenny, I, uh, you know, I, I hope that uh, having died once to a very unfortunate disintegration hasn't really uh, put a damper on your incredibly bright personality and happy-go-lucky attitude. Uh, One... I mean, after all, you are a paladin among paladins. Yes, I am the, prect the protector paladin, mm -hmm. obviously. Yep. Um, one, one weird thing, I did... Mm -hmm. Just completely skip puberty, apparently. I don't know if you noticed, but my voice isn't squeaking anymore. Yeah, that's a really weird side effect of, of coming back to life. I don't yes. think I've ever heard about that one. I, I just completely skip puberty. Wow. I mean, that's probably great. It's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, can't argue with that. <laughs> well, Jenny, uh, congratulations on skipping puberty, uh, and welcome back to Pete and Jeremy's D&D &D time. I hope you have a great adventure tonight. Uh, and of course, last but certainly not least, Cho'Gall, Hammerfist of the Soothing Voice. Cho'Gall, how are you? Hey, guys. You know, I haven't been bad the week since the incident. The, the incident? Are you talking about last week? You look off into the distance dramatically. Yes, the incident. Oh, well, we're not talking about the incident. Cho'Gall, I heard you were working on a new book. I am. What's is now actually? Oh no, Chogall. Yeah. Are you gonna have to publish some errata to your "How Not to Die" when everyone's trying to kill you book? Actually, it's a, uh, it's it's a sequel. Um. Oh no. It's <laughs> how to undie when you have clearly not followed the rules of how not to die. <laughs> That's a very specific book, but I feel like it's going to be really popular amongst Bartholomew's adventurers. Like, you know, just a, a really helpful book for people to read. Is it like, yeah. is it, what's the tone? Is it like a very fun, kind of happy book? Or it's, it's maybe... pretty sarcastic. <laughs> oh, it's extreme. <laughs> Shit. Oh, yeah. Sarcasm everywhere. <laughs> now, is it the kind of book that if you don't know it's sarcasm and you're reading it, you might not realize it's sarcastic, the whole book? Or um, is it very is it obvious? Pretty obvious. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. I see. Well, uh, well, Chogal, um, good luck with the new book. I'm sure it will join among your others. Which of your books is actually the best seller, the best selling one right now? Is it just probably the original? Probably still, yeah, probably still the original. How to have a soothing voice. voice. Absolutely. Well, Chogal, I'm, I'm glad you're back. I hope you have a fantastic adventure this evening. And your adventure begins. As you all walk into Bartholomew's shop, you've made your way to the main entrance, which is just kind of in the middle of the woods, like a small cottage in the middle of the woods. Weird kind of spot. There are several other entrances throughout the land of D&D &D time, probably portals, uh, por you know, portal related. But you've made your way in and you can see that the, oh, my cat is trying to throw my minis on the ground. Sorry about that. He's very upset with me for not playing with him. Anyway. Uh, real quickly, uh, yeah. Cho'Gall. You yeah. understand that there are pirated versions of your book out on on the. Oh no! I've also gone about burning every single one of them, and trying to find whoever has been pirating them. What are the pirated? Okay. What is a pirated book like that? What is? What do you? What do you have to do to make a pirated version of your book? I'm sorry. Different topic. Uh, 
as the adventure begins, uh, you make your way to Bartholomew's shop. You notice the large metal cage which was protecting it during Bartholomew's absence is just gone. Everything seems uh, pretty much normal, like it was before any of the Carnival of Souls events began. And uh, as you kind of walk in, uh, you notice Bartholomew doesn't seem to be there right now, uh, but you hear in the back an old, like, like, you hear him, like, humming to himself or something. Uh, he's in the back room. And you see Roger. Uh, he is standing in the middle of the room, kind of by the, um, by the counter. Uh, he's still wearing his kind of uh, his swim trunks and his really, really lame looking Hawaiian button down shirt. Um, but he's terribly sunburned. He's bright red. Uh, you can see he's not wearing his glasses, which is very rare for Roger. They're in his, they're in his uh, uh, shirt pocket. Uh, and there are these clear marks on his face where he was not sunburned with the rims of his glasses. Uh, and he is putting down like a little briefcase. You can see some like clothes sticking out of it. And he looks towards you all and says, Oh, hey guys, how's it going? Well, well, well. Look who decided to show up a week late. I'm, I'm I... not a week late. I'm right on time. This is the my first day back. Jenny walks up and gives Roger a big slap on the back and says, oh, Welcome back, Roger. Back. Why did you do that? Also, it's what the hell is oh, little one. What happened while I was gone? This place is a... I mean, the shop seems fine, but the rest of the world seems like a complete disaster. Bartholomew was beheaded. We were all <laughs> killed by some shadow court uh, people, nightmare court uh, things. Wait, what? Yes, the Nightmare Court attack. Uh, like last year, Hellenic attack. You, you know how you missed that as well? Yeah, totally not salty, by the way. It's a whole I, thing. You'd have to be there to see it. I mean, I had literally just signed on when Hellenic attack. You know, I wasn't. I was still going to do all the paperwork, getting everything checked out. Uh, like, I, I, this is really strange. Uh, you said Bartholomew died? That's awfully it was in front of everyone. I'm pretty sure. I mean, Bartholomew can't can't die, can he? That's I, I, so I, I literally know. just talked to him. Are you are you sure he's dead? Unless something happened. I mean, I perhaps he's undead. Uh, uh, just I, I, to make I, I, sure, I Nigel will use a divine sense to see if he smells undeath from Bartholomew in the other. room. No, you don't smell any undeath. Do I smell old man cologne? Yeah. It's on Roger, though. <laughs> uh, uh, Jenny will also divine sense because Jenny's a paladin. Jenny takes a big <laughs> sniff of the air. You also smell old man cologne on Roger. Anyway, on Roger? Uh, yeah, old, he's wearing old man cologne. Well, I suppose if you're immortal, decapitation doesn't really mean much. I didn't know he could... That no, that should that should have killed him if, if he uh, if he got decapitated. You're you're certain. According but. to Adrian's books, um, wizards know a spell called clone. Are there several thousand no. Bartholomews hiding somewhere in a vault? Oh God, no, 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 no! You don't want to screw around with clone. You see, if if you use clones, what happens is sometimes, like literally anything that's like a magical disturbance, and this place is a magical disturbance, can cause them to wake up, and then they just try and kill you. So that we don't we don't mess around with clothes. Can you anyway, imagine the, the horror of so um, many Bartholomews? Yes. Yeah, also, we don't want to give Jeremy any ideas for next time. I already have plenty of ideas. Anyway, not the point. Um, what was I got that, a mission Roger? for you guys. Uh, I got a mission. I got a mission for you guys. Oh. Yeah. Um, okay, we just got this in. He, he kind of like uh, fiddles with some papers and flips through them. Say, all right, uh, one. Story to hear, story to hear, story. Ah, fable. All right, cool. Um, looks like one of the princes in the small kingdoms needs a hand. Uh, so I'm going to just... He's got some coordinates. All right, I'm going to light up the teleportation circle. You guys can go ahead through and... Uh, hold on. Do you have the hand that we need to deliver to them? No, don't you see? We have to go sever the hand that oh. we deliver to them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, not at all. Though I think... He, well, maybe. He needs to Probably get something. Probably a hand of his know. enemy or something. His, he, well, you he just said that name. he needs a hand. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know, worse. man. Look, you got, go through the damn portal. He should be there, I guess. His name's Prince Dwayne. I don't know. Good luck. Uh, and Roger Good kind job, of Roger. And Roger actually, before you can push it, 
trying to push a broom, Kyogo puts a hand on Roger's shoulder. Ah, like, it burns. It hurts <laughs> because of his terrible sunburn. And the show yeah, will give yeah. him a slap on the back out as well. <laughs> Jenny already did that. Jenny uh, joins in. Lord, do you also harm Roger with his terrible sunburn? No, no, I sympathy. <laughs> I don't want to mint on the counter and just leave it. Excellent. So, uh, Roger lights up the teleportation circle, and with a flash, away you all go. Uh, and you find yourself standing in the middle of what looks like uh, a forest. There are birds chirping. Um, there are a bunch of trees. Up ahead, there's kind of just grass all over the ground. It's not a super dense forest. Um, look up, beautiful blue sky, a couple clouds. Yeah, what, what do you guys do? Some some rocks? You know, this is nice. We're just going to stand around and look around. Enjoy it. Okay. Yeah, you're I'm in like kind of a clearing area. To, uh... What was that switch? Prince oh, no. Dwayne here. Uh, you call out Can for you guys Prince Dwayne. Yep, there yeah. we go. Sorry, you robot it out for a second. Uh, you call oh, out nice. for Prince Dwayne. Uh, there is no immediate response. Kind of an odd place for a prince to meet the, with us. Perhaps this is some shady under the balls business where he can't meet us in his palace. Hey, shady prince, where are you? Uh, I guess, how loudly are you two yelling, um, Jenny and, Togo, and Jogo? Togo only has one, uh, sound, one, one volume setting, and it's loud. <laughs> okay, so, Jenny, are you, like, top of your lungs yelling? No. Okay. Jenny, can you roll me uh, a d20? Uh, and Chogal, can you roll me a d20 with advantage? Okay. Just a d20, uh, nothing else. Just straight d20. All right. Yeah, uh, no immediate response. Um, you look around, there are like a couple of, of sizable rocks. Um, in the distance is like a pretty big, like six or seven foot tall rock. Some other small rocks that like might be good to sit on nearby. Um, I'm going to take out like some fireworks that I got from last year and never sure. used. <laughs> you take out fireworks? Yeah. Okay. And then Jill will climb to the top of the biggest boulder. Okay. So you uh, you go to climb on top of the boulder. You only need an athletics check, you know. Yep, you climb on top of the boulder. You're standing on top of the boulder currently. Uh, you notice there's a beehive hanging from a tree nearby. Is anyone near this beehive? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so yet. You kind of walked it, you know, 15 feet ahead of everyone else for the I'll boulder. Keep that in mind. You're about maybe six feet up on this boulder. It's like big, but it's not huge. Um, Do I see anything? Yeah, false sight for myself. We can say that you've maxed that out at this point, Switch, uh, Jenny, knowing that, like, that's kind of your, your vibe, I assume? Uh, no. It's, it's every hour I do it. I okay. don't, I don't do it till I max it out. I just, every hour, re -up. Mad respect. Good job. All right, seven hit points. Um, you guys are just kind of standing around. Nigel, you're on a rock. You see a beehive. The rest of you smell the fresh country air in this kind of forest. Small oh, that's so far. Pine needles. Huh? Oh, yeah, you, by silver. Jogal, you've taken out some fireworks and you're sticking the stick in the ground. Are you just going to light them up? Yeah, I'm lighting one of them up. All right. Uh, you go to light the firework. Uh, Sword, Jenny, do you two do anything as Jogal is lighting this firework or are you just watching? I'm going to turn to the other, the other paladin and say, you're a paladin, right? You should prove it by casting the spell find person. Oh, 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 oh. To find someone who's coming here to meet us. Because they might be in trouble. Yes, and we are paladins responsible for protecting people. You I don't think you have a good grasp on paladins. As the firework shoots up into the air and then <laughs> explodes. And as it does so, does so Nigel, I need you to roll a dexterity saving throw up on top of the boulder. All right, you're all good. Uh, there's a sudden shift as the boulder underneath you moves, Nigel, and it just goes, oh, oh. Uh, and as you look over, 
it is not simply a boulder, but it is a very large kind of earth elemental kind of character. It looks more golemy a little bit now that it's opened its eyes and doesn't just look like a boulder. Uh, and you're pretty much sitting on its shoulder, uh, Nigel, uh, or standing on its shoulder rather. And it goes, Oh, oh. oh. hello. Oh, hi. Are you, are you so Dwayne, Dwayne, the uh, rock, I mean, Prince. Yes, I'm Dwayne, the sedimentary sovereign. Are you Bartholomew's adventurers? I've been waiting here for days. Yep, I was getting here. worried. Well, uh, there were events that happened last week, but everything's fine now. Oh, that's fine. Days mean pretty much nothing to rocks. Uh, he laughs like he made a joke and none of you seem to really get it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you laugh around. You patronize him? Is that what you're doing, Joe? Oh, you're being patronizing him? Oh, no. He's actually laughing. He's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Okay. How long does it take before time does begin to matter to a rock? Uh, I don't know. Months. Anyway, we can go down and tell them that we can start the race then. Is All this race. going to take days or months? This no, race? the race is super quick. Race? There's a race? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Did, did Bartholomew not tell you? I'm sorry. I'm not a very good writer. Most of what I said sent was probably illegible. Um, I mean, also, I told me it's a little uh, weird lately. Yeah, you know, we can walk and talk. Uh, and he starts to like step, and as he steps, the ground just kind of like like pulls apart in front of him, uh, making just a convenient, nice little ten foot diameter tunnel. And he just starts going down at like a forty degree angle. So it's pretty steep. We're uh, following. <laughs> yeah, it's still us following. The rest of you kind of follow as he kind of explains the premise to you all. Yep. Uh, uh, so the bird right. sounds fade away and he uh, begins to explain. Yes. Um, you see, this is a very important race. It's a, uh, well, there's a princess, Emerelta, and I've loved her for a very long time. And I'm hoping that with this race, if you race as my kind of, uh, what's the term? Uh, gets I don't know. You know, represent me. And if you win, maybe the prize will be something worthy of her beautiful, beautiful hand. I just, you know, we've been, we've been kind of seeing each other for a very long time. And that's in rock years. So that's a long time for you guys too. And I need to win this race because I really want to give her something special. Well, with Stone Cold Killer looks like yours, who could say no to that? Thanks. <laughs> he kind of chuckles. Uh, so basically, the race should be pretty straightforward. You'll get to pick your mount, and then you'll have to win the race. But um, I'm warning you, it could be bad. My you nemesis is also in the race. And... You don't think that hiring representatives is a little bit dirty? No. It I'm shows his strength of coin as well as influence. Oh, <laughs> I get it. It was a pun. He's a rock. He's not a dirt monster. No, exactly. But I'm a rock. You said you were the sed sediment. So oh. Yeah, well, I used to be dirt. I'm not dirt anymore. I'll... Jeez. Well, one day will you become a diamond? Uh, oh. I mean... I haven't really thought... I mean, no. No, we're not thinking about diamonds it, yet. It's a little little early to start thinking about kids. Uh, oh, is man. it hard being a rock? Oh, uh, you could say that. It's a bit tough. Oh, come now. I imagine it's quite down to earth. Are there, like, rock breaks or something nearby? Something small to ride on? Or, well, small in your case. What? He kind of just... He's continuing to just walk, and he's going at, like, a pretty... Maybe, like, 20 feet per round, but you're going down pretty quickly. Um, Nichelle is still riding him. Yeah, he hasn't t told you to get off or anything. Um, or else just walk up the side of a pocket duel. Yep. Um, is there anything in particular you guys want to ask him, or do you just kind of listen to him? He's just going to keep talking, and he always tries to bring the conversation back 
to his Princess Emerelda. I'm going to try to make as many rock puns as I can come up with. Most of them go over his head, but a couple of them he laughs really heartily to. Um, like, oh, <laughs> should, should I roll? I get it. That's pretty shale. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, yeah, if you want. Yeah, exactly that. You make great puns, but he doesn't quite get all of them. Um, he's not like stupid, but this guy does not have a super high, uh, maybe uh, wisdom. He doesn't get the 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 pun, the nuance to some of your jokes. Um, but yeah, you get the idea talking to him that he he really loves this Princess Emerelda, uh, and by the time maybe like ten or fifteen minutes of walking, it all opens up into a uh, a huge kind of cavern. Uh, you can see that there are strange uh, stone structures. They're made for creatures definitely larger than humans, maybe like particularly large orcs or goliaths or something. Um, uh, obviously rock people, but... Uh, and you see rock people walking all over the place. Uh, there are large stands up ahead of you. You can't really see beyond them, but you can hear the cheering crowd uh, of of people kind of cheering for something and a spotlight kind of shines on you guys you just come out of this new tunnel in the wall uh and a voice kind of calls out ah and he has returned prince Dwayne and his um his subordinates and there's more cheering prince Dwayne, are you ready for the race yeah i'm pretty ready are you guys ready yeah, quick. We're all about. Okay, good. Oh, you'll get to choose. Uh, just oh, go cool. ahead, and he, he kind of points up ahead to uh, an area like in the ble in the bleachers, where there's a clear like uh, access area to the the whatever track you're going to. Um, good luck, guys. Seriously, I need you to win this. I just, I couldn't. I don't know. I just feel so embarrassed if I didn't have something really remarkable to give her. You know what I mean? She's really important to me. We get it. We'll do this for you. Thanks. I mean, I'm holding this entire race just so that I can I can do this, so good luck. Uh, you guys uh, move ahead. Uh, head down through the little access area, uh, and you are met by a much smaller uh, earthy creature. Uh, he looks like he is more like a dirt elemental guy or a dirt golem. Uh, and kind of looks at you and says, Hey, uh, welcome to the race. Are you all ready to the race? You're the racers for Dwayne. Yeah, we're sort of the mouse. Excellent. Uh, well, uh, first, y'all are pretty small compared to some of the racers. So you're well, all going to be all on one. Too bad. <laughs> well, you're pretty big. I'll say you're not too bad for a human. Um, y'all are going to be human. to pick us. <laughs> really? He's a Goliath. No, he, he just doesn't get. No, he doesn't know. Oh. He's looking at you like, I'm pretty sure you're a human. He kind of like goes like back your arm. Why are you fleshy if you're not a human? It's actually much harder than you guys both because I have strength and because my skin is like spit stone. Oh. Weird. Anyway, uh, yeah, so you're all going to ride the same mount, so pick wisely. Uh, our options that are left, there aren't a lot left. Most of the best ones have been chosen. Uh, there's the giant, giant centipede, the dire naked mole rat, the deep rothe sled team, uh, a rock, and the slorg. It's a slorg. Uh, what do you mean it's a, it's a slorg? Tell me about the stats and abilities of each, please. We choose the rock. Uh, uh, Does the rock end with a K or a C? It ends with a K. It's like uh, the big boulder rock. I would like to ride the rock. All right, we got one boulder rock. Yeah, together. Yeah, it's a team thing. You guys will have to choose. Yes, I would like to ride the rock. It's a rock. Yes. Nigel, oh. sword, Chogal, any? You have any preferences? Uh, film the, but we're uh, what was the? Sled team? The the deep rote sled team. So what are all those things? Uh, they're, they're deep rote. I don't know what you're. You know what? Yeah, you know it's what it's, it's not the deep rote. We're confused about it. It's the sled team part. 
Oh, it's, there's a whole bunch of deep rote attached to a sled. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's not just one deep rote, they're pretty small. That sounds like the worst action. Well, uh, look, you guys got to pick at least in the next 10 years. I'm, I mean, minutes. Sorry. Uh, you know, the Jamaican <laughs> mole rat might be good because it could dig underground and stuff. Mm, I, that'd be pretty bad. It'd be really slow at that. But maybe. Well, which one is the best then? I would oh. think the centipede could like cling to ceilings and walls and yeah, stuff. They're all good in their own way, right? The mole rat can burrow, the, the centipede can climb on walls, exactly. Uh, the rock is kind of a wild card. You never know with them. Uh, the slorg, never gonna n get knocked off of something, ever. And uh, the deep rope they sled team, you know, at least there's a lot of them. You get like 20 deep rope they, it's a lot. I'm putting my money lame. on the wild card. What do you guys say? Worst case scenario, with this many paladins, we can all summon seeds to drag it. I mean, that's true. You know what? Let's go for the rock. Okay. Let's because, go for the rock. Yes, I, I can summon seed. For sure. All right. I don't know what that means. Uh, Sword, it appears... Despite whatever you may have wanted, your team has overwhelmingly selected the rock. Uh, and the dirt uh, golem says, all right, just follow and being me. A, I guess since I'm the only one who cannot summon a steed, I'll be uh, handling the rock. Yes, I definitely can summon a steed. <laughs> That's good. We have so many paladins for such a quest then. <laughs> so you all kind of walk forward. Uh, and you see uh, a bunch of different riders on incredibly bizarre uh, creatures, including one particular figure that catches your um, catches your attention very uh, very keenly. They are a glimmering kind of prismatic um, golem made of pure amethyst. Uh, they they stand maybe eight feet tall and currently are on top of what looks like a a massive bat. Um, this gargantuan fangs. Yeah, I mean, he's pretty intimidating. Um, you're right, because you're actually a large creature. That's a troll. Uh, yeah. He's actually perfectly <laughs> sized for you, Chogol, this whole place. But he, <laughs> he's standing on top. He's getting stuff prepared. Like, he's got a, a special saddle. Um, and he's wearing a little crown on the tip of his kind of amethyst uh, head. Um, and you, you know this to be Amethysto, the nemesis of Dwayne. Uh, Amethysto, you have been, you've been warned about him uh, on the way down. Uh, and then you pass by a gigantic slug. Says, oh, yeah, that's a slorg. Uh, you pass by what looks like a team of 20 cows, uh, except they're a little smaller than cows. They're like goat-sized cows attached to a sled. Uh, that's, uh, that's the Deep Rote sled team. Uh, you pass by a dire naked mole rat, like a 12-foot-tall naked roll mole rat with bone protrusions, uh, and a gigantic, gigantic centipede, very similar to what you could possibly imagine. And finally, you come to your mount, a big, a big rock, <laughs> like yeah, 20 feet tall, maybe 10 feet wide at the top. It's a big rock, very steep on the sides. Uh, the crowd is still kind of cheering in the distance. Um, I'm going to yeah, put you... my hand over the rock okay. and just kind of feel it. Get in touch with mm -hmm. it. Become the rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as, as you, you do that, you you um, kind of look over and you can see Amethysto uh, is giving out little bags to a couple of the other riders and they're just leaving. They're like, you know, hefting the bag. Clearly it's money and they're just leaving. Uh, so all of the other mounts don't have riders right now. It's just you guys and Amethyst stuff. All right, this is fine. Totally fine. Actually, there's a, guy, there's a guy riding the slorg. Like, just a normal human. Oh, God. Have any of the larger, more impressive mounts been abandoned by those getting paid off? No, the other people were just going to ride the other mounts. Uh, I, I get up on the back of the slorg, on the back of the slorg with the yeah, he's just, oh, hey, how's it going? Pretty good. How are you? I'm all right. All right, I'm just going to chill with you. Is that all right? 
Oh yeah, I don't know how I got here. I got lost in the woods. I'm uh Okay. I'm uh I'm from Rapunzel's kingdom. Hey, do you want me to drop the What? You can you can stay you can stay on, but I was just saying like if you want me to drive instead I Oh yeah, I'm sure. I don't know. I'm... Okay. Uh, make sure that you hold on to me tight. Just uh, wrap your arms around my waist. Yep, just like... Okay, okay. He does so. Yeah, and I'm gonna try to move the sword to the starting line. It's very slow as it creeps toward the starting line. Amethyst knows that it. is like... <clears throat> it's got like red devilish eyes and it kind of... It's, as it snorts, little bits of fire and smoke come out of its nostrils and it kind of exudes an odor of brimstone. Or maybe that's some of the audience, we're not sure. Yeah. Uh, can I maneuver this slorg to, uh, be, like, right next to Amethysto? Uh, as you're, like, going to do that, you're making way over, um, you hear a voice kind of call out, are the rest of you on top of the rock? Yeah, go go find up. Yeah, yeah. Sword, sword, you're on the rock, and Nizha, oh, I've oh, got yeah, the reins in hand. Excellent, yeah, there are two reins, they don't seem to be attached to anything. It's just a leather strap that is hanging off the front. It's not even attached to the rock. You're just holding it. It was just on time. I'm also um, going to find speed just in case we need a backup. Can that show will 10 also... minutes. I don't think you have time for that, unfortunately, oh, yet. Correct. Now, once we start, you can decide you want to do that. Um, All right. In the moment, a voice kind of calls out. It's the announcer you heard earlier. Jenny, you're moving the slur gone over. Uh, and it says, Alrighty, um, folks, are you ready for the quickly, Great Boulder Dash? Yeah? Do do we time. see a finish line? No, you don't. You just see a dark, dark tunnel up ahead. Actually, it's not okay. dark. It's fairly le- well lit because there's like gems in the walls emitting light. And uh, uh, just going forward, I have 120 feet of Devil Sun. Okay. That's uh, not relevant right now but it might be relevant in the future. You'll find out. Uh, and the announcer calls out, Alrighty, folks, the race for the age... Oh, it seems that most of the contestants has le- have left, leaving only Dwayne's representatives. The cheering kind of continues. And Amethysto's representatives. And it just goes totally silent. And Amethysto is just kind of like shaking his hands. Uh, you can see there's like a big box stand where royalty would sit. Uh, and the announcer continues to, to explain the rules of the race, uh, which basically comes to there are no rules. Um, and yet, sitting up in the box, uh, you can see Dwayne, and next to him is a giant rectangular chunk of emerald. It has no face, no anything. It's just positioned seemingly on a chair. I call out, and Rapunzel's representative. Yeah, it gets kind of drowned out under the cheer. Uh, and the guy kind of goes, hey, I'm a refugee. Please don't send me back. Uh, and the announcer says, all righty. The race begins in five, four, three, two, one, go. And the everything cheers. And with these begins to fly at intense speeds directly forward. Uh, Sword, you have the, the reins for the, the rock? Yeah. Give me uh, an animal handling check. Oh. Yeah! Oh. The rock kind of like moves a little bit, like about a quarter inch just kind of shifts forward. Uh, Jenny, are you mushing the, the sword? No, I am casting thunder. <laughs> You're just casting thunder step on what? So thunder step is like missy step, but it's a higher spell slot level. It does okay. damage to everything around you okay. from where you teleport from. Uh-huh. And instead of 30 feet, you teleport 90. Sure. And I'm going to teleport into Amethysto's uh, carriage, basically. Uh, I mean, he's just, like, on the back of, of this devil bat. You want to try yep. and get on there? Yep. Oh, dear. Okay. Uh, oh, my. Can you roll Here's the athletics the spell. check? To, to hold on as you appear on this flying creature? Uh, I'm bringing the human with me. Okay. Oh <laughs> he screams in fear. Ah! Yes, uh, that, that, is, that is another benefit of Thunderstep is I just teleport <laughs> with someone... Oh, the Slorg someone... explodes. Oh, yeah. The Slorg blows up. Um, 
All right, can you roll me that athletics check? And Sora, uh, can you roll could, me another? Could I argue hand? acrobatics? No. This is holding on its rope, its raw strength, holding on at high speed. Sword, you whip it a second time, and this time it, the whole rock is kind of forward about a foot. You can see Amethyst still like 300 feet ahead of you down the way. Uh, Jenny, you appeared next to Amethyst and he just ah, and didn't seem to, you know, be, he was shocked. You grab on and you're just hanging from like the tail of this uh, this devilish bat creature uh, as it kind of hisses and is flying to there ahead of you. Uh, the rest of you see it kind of beginning to swerve out of control. <laughs> in the distance. Right. Go, Jenny, you've got this. Uh, all right. So the rest of you see that like the rock is not moving very much. Sword, you're whipping it real good, and you're seeming to get somewhere. It's getting better. I'm gonna what do you guys it. do? It's so Nichelle scary. hops off. Take your time. What, Nichelle? You hop N- off. Nichelle will hop off, run to the sled with all the roof attached, yep. and yep. try to bring it over in front Ooh. of the rock. Okay. You move the, the sled over to the rock. Yeah, the, the, the cows move deftly, but they're slow because they're cows. Uh, you could probably run faster than the cows. Um, all right, um, you're helping Chogol. Uh, so Thor, can you give me another uh, athletic check? Jenny, you're hanging from this, I'm sorry, animal handling. Uh, Jenny, you're hanging from the devil bat. What would you like to do? You got one hand in yep. the, on the, yeah. One hand is occupied. Uh, one hand is occupied, but that uh-huh. means that I can still do my racial because it doesn't require a semantic component. Okay. And interestingly enough, the material component is that. Oh, you cast the darkness on what? Uh, magical darkness spreads from a point you choose within range to fill a 15 foot radius. So I'm going to choose, uh, hey, you can, right you can choose in front of the bat. Uh, sure. Yeah. yeah 15 I'm foot going radius to, would encompass the bat if you want. I'm going to choose my shield. Okay. Yeah, your shield emanates darkness. The rest of you see a cloud of darkness appear about 300 feet away. Um, Jenny, you don't know where the guy is anymore? You don't, you don't see him. The human? Yeah, the human. I told him to hold on tightly to me. Did he? You don't, like... you don't feel him. Actually, let me see how he did. Oh. Uh, you don't feel him. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Okay. Um, sword. As he whip the 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 reins one last time, you don't have quite the vigor, but Chogal patting the rock, saying it's okay, buddy. The rock suddenly begins to skid forward, uh, going about 30 feet, sparks kind of flying off the back of it, uh, under no obvious means of propulsion. All right, the rock, you've got this. You see the rock is leaving. Uh, What do you all want to do? Goodbye. Um, uh, Who else is going to cheer on the rock? Make sure it's doing a a book while it's doing this. Uh, Wait, wait, what are you doing? Reading, reading, uh, rock on my to help encourage it. Okay, sure. All right. Uh, Sword, what would you like to do? Do you think 30 feet per round is good enough for the rock? No, in fact, I'm going to increase, uh... Oh, you're going to whip it good? I, I'm go- no, I'm going to use, uh, Thaumatarchy to increase, uh, his voice of encouragement. Oh, oh damn, excellent! Chogal, could you roll me an animal handling check with advantage? As as sword, the sword's booming uh, voice, it, booming um, magic empowers uh, your voice. Oh, is that it there at 13? Well, yeah. uh, the rock continues to glide forward at 30 feet per round, uh, sparks flying off the back. Um, Nigel, what do you do? You're about 60 feet now behind the rock, and you have a sled team full of, um, of uh, cows. I have my cows dash forward, catching up to the rock, and I will lash the sled to the rock now that I've caught up to it, and sink the cows and the rock up so the rock has its propulsion as well as some additional uh, propulsion. The cows in front or behind the rock? in front, if I can get it to lash together and count as a single unit for movement so they don't get crushed. 
there's really nothing to lash to the front of the rock. Like, the rock doesn't have anything on it. No, no. no. I tie, like, on the left side of the sled uh, my rope, run around the rock and tie it onto the right side of the sled. Okay, so it's, like, next to them. They're they're next to each other. Okay. I got you. I I see what you get. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jenny, as you're hanging from it, your darkness appears. You can see, uh, you hear Amethysto going, Ah, what is this? What is going on? Uh, and the devil bat kind of <laughs> makes a horrible snort and like roar kind of sound, but keeps flying, seemingly unfazed by your darkness. This creature may actually be a devilish creature in nature, or fiendish at the very least. Um, and it is rushing ahead now, maybe like 600 feet away from the rest of the group. Uh, and you can see below you, Jenny, you're getting really close to the next chamber in this race, which is a big lava pit with like a couple of pillars just sticking up out of it. Uh, as uh, you've entered the volcano region, as the crowd kind of dies away. Uh, um, alrighty, and we're back to the front of the initiative. Um, uh, do, do I get a turn or? Oh yeah, please. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, yeah, you can go ahead. I forgot um, about you. <laughs> I'm going to bonus action hex blades curse this uh-huh. hellish fiend. Sure. Do you want me to post it? No, I I know what you got. Go ahead. You cast hex blades curse on him. Okay. And I'm going to take out one of my 12 dagger. Okay. And I'm going to stab it into the bat. And I'm trying to use it basically as a pitten. Oh, a handle. Like a climb- Excellent. Yeah. I super dig. Go ahead. Um, make your attack roll. Yeah, you absolutely hit. Uh, it sinks in. You can go ahead and give me the damage. And yeah, you think um, that you, you've got a pretty good handhold with that. Um, Could I? Uh no, your Use. shield is on your back still, right? You don't have your shield out? Um... Because in order to... Because you had one hand holding on. Yeah, in order to no, stab yeah. I'll, I'll put it on my back. But could I yeah. use Green Flame Blade to ignite Amethysto on fire? Probably not as part of that attack. Uh, because you, you know, you were doing something specific with it. You wanted it to be a, uh, like, a, a handhold specifically. You know, I, I gave you something else with it. Yep, sure. Um, but next round, absolutely. Okay. Uh, the rest of you. Okay, so we're now we're on the next round. Uh, you guys can see Jenny is about to go into the next chamber. You can see the lava beyond. What do you all want to do? Encouraging uh, the rock. We've got you guys this rocky. Continuing to to boost the rock. Yes. Uh, in the um, it uh, did it take the hex fates curve? Oh yeah, that should be an extra five. Damn it. Uh, three. Proficiency okay. bonus. It's gonna be nine. I'm gonna mark that over here. Uh, devil bat. Nine points. Radical. Okay. for us. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Sword. You know your animals. You take it and you whip the, the rock. Apparently, this is some sort of animal, and it begins to continue to skid forward. Uh, and at this point, it's going like 60 feet. It's so fast. Um, this is actually really getting quick. I'm gonna have to roll for the, uh... Oh, you got your land vehicles? Oh, yeah! Michelle, with your land vehicles check, you're able to, like, maneuver... The, the, the Deep Road Day sled team can't keep up, but you're able to maneuver the sled such as behind the rock, and now all of the cows have just piled onto the sled. So you're just on the sled with a pile of cows being dragged by this rock. Uh, as if it's just rocketing forward. Uh, I'm okay with this. Um, uh, Jenny, you guys are still about 400 feet behind. Yo. Um, cool. Uh, I'm going to do another. How big is this bat again? Like, is it big? It's a huge, it's a huge creature. Okay, Actually, so be... to like travel from one end of the bat to the other, would it take m- multiple daggers? And if so, how many? Uh, like two, probably. Two more, two others, or, could, like, or 
I mean, to like, to reach the other end of it, yeah. I, to reach Amethysta, you do like one more dagger. Apply them. How about to reach a wing? Uh, probably still one. About the same. Okay. Uh, I will do that. Okay. Alrighty, yeah, you, uh, you climb forward another notch, pulling yourself up. Amethysta still seems blinded. What's going on? I can't see anything. Uh, as you're climbing up this bat. Uh, the rest of you just still, still see the darkness. You also noticed that last round, uh, a dude with like a white, in you know, a white t-shirt with a pair of jeans that was like on the floor with Jenny originally falls out of the smoke cloud, uh, the, the cloud of darkness, and just kind of falls down into the lava pit. Out of sight. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, an uh, additional three from Hex played. Okay, excellent. So it's gonna be a total of six center. Uh, yeah, you're climbing up, Jenny. You're making your way. Um, alrighty. So you guys are rocketing ahead. Um, what would you all like to do? You aren't quite catching them yet, but... You're giving it one more. Uh, at this point, you've already got it going. That actually is going to succeed. Wow. Um, as you... Yeah, it's only a DC 12 at this point. Start wow. dying goes down. Uh, yeah, you now have the rock moving at 120 feet per round. It's uh, yeah. grinding along. Uh, and you can see the rock begins to like lift off the ground, and looking down, there's nothing. It just appears. Nigel, you can see really clearly behind it. It's just a flying rock right now, with a very flat rock. Um, I hold really tight to the rope itself, not to the wagon <laughs> you, anymore. Yeah, you see the rope is like, eh, it's like it's having a hard time pulling 24 cows, but it's working. Or 20 cows. You think 24 would have broken? <laughs> Actually, I think I will try to tie myself to the rope, and then cut loose the cows. Okay, okay, sure. All right, Nigel, you're able to do that. Um, but that's your action this turn. You are now tied to the back of the rock. The cows get lost behind you. Just, they like skid to a stop right before the edge of the lava pit. And Nigel, as the rock begins to fly over the lava pit, you look down and there's just lava below you. <laughs> uh, you're held on by a rope. Uh, you also see the dude just kind of like hanging from a rock about halfway down toward the lava. Oh my god, he's about. <laughs> it looks like he did not quite hit the lava. He's just hanging on for dear life. But he's probably screwed. Um, Sword, you did your thing. Chogol, you did your thing. Uh, Jenny, what would you like to do? Uh, last time that Jenny was in Central City, uh -huh. uh, she got a souvenir and she'd like to share that souvenir with this bats. Okay. Uh, specifically a black dragon's acid. Oh, okay. You take out that that little bit of acid and uh, I assume you're just dumping everything you got on it. I'm going to carefully apply it to the There's membrane There's no carefully applying, the rocketing 120 feet per round, hanging on by a dagger. I mean, by, you can, like, by two daggers. With your two, you can like pull the cork and pour. That's about all you got, I think. Okay. But I'll give it to um, you. I, I do want to ask if the acid damage will trigger Hexblade's curse or not. Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay. Then additional Unless it specifies three... a damage, uh, weapon, but I don't think it does. It says uh, any damage yeah. roll, which means that it would proc on Hex, but... Alrighty. Uh, I, I don't know what you want me to roll for a Black Dragon's acid. Uh, well, it, you know what I'll do? I'll roll a Dexterity saving throw for the bat. Or sure. Do you want my spell save, DC, or do you want to use your own DC? Uh, what kind of dragon was it? Young or adult? Do you know? Uh, yeah, I think it, it was a, was young a one. fable tier adventure. Okay, it was the one where it was spewing into the air, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it fails. It's not gonna hit its DC with a 15. Uh, the devil bat screams in a horrible like <laughs> scream as its wing begins to devolve and dis uh, dissolve and break apart, and it begins to veer and actually, like, barrel roll. I need you to roll a dexterity saving throw, Jenny, as this thing is crashing out of the air uh, as you try okay. and hold on. Is this a uh, barrel roll or an aileron roll? I don't know the difference. Uh, you, uh, uh, 11? Could I have advantage from using the daggers? I'm letting you roll because you have the daggers, unfortunately. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you unfortunately do fall. Uh, however, you're on the other side of the lava pit now. 
the lava pit was only two rounds, so you're on the other side of it by the time you fall. Uh, you are going to fall about 30 feet. Uh, so it's only eight points of falling damage. You <laughs> crash onto the ground. The rest of you see a dark uh, shape kind of crash out of the sky. Uh, and you see the devil bat swirling and crashing to the ground up ahead. You also see, coming out from like uh, little caves on the side of this lava pit, this lava chamber high up, a bunch of uh, gray skinned people with like bones kind of sticking out. Um, they seem to be wearing also the bone jewelry and stuff. They're blind, they have no eyes, just sunken eye sockets. These are Grimlocks. Uh, and the Master! Master! The, the Grimlocks uh, yell in that horrible Grimlocky way. And they are going to throw rocks at you guys. Looks like three teams, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, three teams of three Grimlocks have come out. And um, they're going to use their throw stuff ability, which they are going to do at disadvantage. Um, so, Nigel, uh, this one's coming at you. Uh, whoopsies, I got to roll that so you can see it. The Grimlocks use throw stuff. Oh, did it not roll? There we go. Uh, they got a 12. That is a miss. A 14 and a 7. All miss. Alrighty. Uh, this one's going at you, Sword. Uh, a 19, an 8, and an 7. Uh, All miss. The... Oh, wow, the 19 is too damn. That extra that's my, armor. That's, okay. my, that's my armor. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, Alright, Chogal, three coming at you. Uh, a wow. fail, a 10, and a 7. Alright. No, the rocks just go, go wide. Uh, you think that they'll get one more round next turn to throw at you again, but that's about it. Um, Jenny, um, you've crashed. We go to the next round of initiatives. Uh, you guys see Amethysto swerve out of the sky. It's like, oh, what is going on, you stupid bats? What happened to your wing? And he crashes somewhere, maybe 500, 600 feet ahead of you, Jenny. You're going very, very fast. Um, <laughs> yeah, the rest of you, he's almost... A, uh, a thousand feet away, but you're going pretty quick, and it looks like the rock is picking up speed still. Uh, <laughs> Nigel, you're just like hanging on for dear life. Um, but you're tied, so you're good. Um, Does it look like we're getting... Like? Will we oh, be getting cool. close to where uh, Jenny fell off this round? Yeah, I, I think at the end of next, or next round, you'll get to Jenny. Okay, I will begin swinging to get some momentum to, like, swing forth and catch her for this train ride. Alrighty. Uh, you're getting ready to catch Jenny. Cool. Uh, Jenny, if you look back and you can see your party on top of this flying boulder, uh, and you see Nigel, like, holding out a hand to get you. Uh, to, to grab you and pull you on. Uh, and also, rocketing, pillars though. of rock. Could I climb up one of the pillars of rock and jump off onto the moving? Uh, with that, yeah, I mean, you'd have to do that just to grab Nigel's hand. And Nigel's pretty much at the, the boulder. That is my... What was that? I'm trying to run up a rock and jump off of it. Acrobatic. Okay, sure. And I'll give it to you. Maybe do a little corkscrew. <laughs> a little flip. A little flips little and flip. shit to make it acrobatics. All right, yep. cool. <laughs> little flips and shit to avoid athletics at all costs. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, all righty, so that's a 13. It's going to make it a little harder for... Well, the, that will set the DC for Nigel catching you. Um, well, let's say let's just handle that now. Nigel, do you want to roll? Or actually... Sword and Chogal, you guys see Jenny like jumping to get on with you guys. Do you two want to do anything? You're currently just riding the rock. It's going. Yeah, I'm going to up the rock. That's what we're doing. I mean, at this point, I'm it doesn't curious. need you to just keep going faster. Oh, okay. It's just kind of. It's going fast. In my case, I will also help. Okay. Like, I'll get out. Okay. So you'll help Nigel. I'll make a last one, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. And um, I guess I will cast the uh, bless. Okay. Alrighty. Oh, that's awesome, actually. All right. So, Nigel, can you, with advantage, roll me an athletics check, and you get that D4 from Swords Bless. Oh man, let's do this. Good luck. <laughs> it's a very important, important roll. Oh, oh yeah. Hot Nigel. Deal. Um, don't you forget to roll the arms. D4. Yeah, 30. 30. <laughs> Alright. 
where would you like to deposit yourself and Jenny? Just on the rock, or do you still want to be hanging from the rope? Or where would you like to be? Swinging forth, managing to reach out and do the arm grab with Jenny, just using that momentum to come up and just land light on our feet right behind uh, your boy Chogon. Okay. Yeah, you guys all are on top of the rock now. It's rocketing forward at like 240 feet per round. It's really fast. Um, you see the Grimlocks behind you, like they go to all throw rocks at Nigel, seeing what's going on, or not seeing what's going on, but just being lucky and blind. Uh, they miss everything because Nigel's so ac- athletic. And Jenny had a pretty good, did a pretty good jump. But uh, you guys rock it out of the lava chamber, leaving the heat all behind you. And you can see up ahead of you, the crashed body of uh, the devil bat lying on the ground. Um, it's kind of like straining to move. It's having a very hard time. Um, but then you see the end of a cave and just a big do, pool of water. Do we see... Like a lake. A, do we see the guy that we're supposed to... Um, no, I think in all of this... You know what? Sword, you didn't have to like do a ton. You just had to cast your spell. So I think, Sword, you saw him leap into the water ahead of you. And that seems to be the only way forward is down into this aquatic portion of the race. Uh, what do you guys want to do right now? It looks like your rock is heading on a crash course for the wall ahead of you at a ludicrous speed. Uh, I'm going to take those reins and <laughs> try. I, I don't know. Imaginatively try to uh, uh-huh. have it follow suit. Can I'd like I... to take the help action. Can I provide anything with my land vehicle proficiency to help him? land this vehicle. This is flying now. Yes, but it's landing. Have... Landing uh, in yeah, water. You know what? I think I think what you can do is you can see okay, roll me roll me um roll me a land vehicles check. Uh what'd you get? A twenty five oh a sixteen. Uh, yeah, Nige- I think I think Nigel, you can give him like an extra plus two, an extra little boost, even beyond the normal reasonableness. Alrighty, Sword, can you also roll your D four uh, from your own bless, and then Nigel's uh, plus two. That's gonna be a total of twenty two. Okay, you see the rock like <laughs> suddenly just jolt downward and splash into the water. Uh, you guys are now tilted at like a 90 degree angle. Can you all roll me a check to try and hold on? Can I have advantage for being tied to the rock yes. still? Um, no, you just succeed. Everyone else is trying to hold on to you, Nigel. Yes. Uh, I'm fine. I think, I think Sword, you're actually also good because you were holding the reins, which seemed to be magically connected to this rock somehow. Ah, uh, so it's this Jenny. It's Jenny and Chogal. Chogal got a 22. Yeah, so it's just Jenny. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Jenny, you're good. You you are able to hold on. Uh, you, Chogal, and uh, Nigel are all kind of launched off of the uh, off the rock as it plunges into this aquatic subterranean um, cave, and none of you can really breathe. You're all just kind of holding your breath as the rock just begins to go through this tunnel. Uh, except for our Nigel, who is blessed by build a space whale, uh, you see a dark shadow of a whale above you. But it's strange because you're in a cavern, so it's not possible. Um, but you see it for a second, Nigel. And uh, yeah, up ahead of you, you see Amethysto, the the big uh, amethyst go- golem, and he's swimming. He's only like 200 feet ahead now. Um, yeah, that's what you're going to yeah, you're you're rocketing at about two hundred feet per round. You'll catch up to it. Uh, what, what do you uh, what do you all want to do? You can't use verbal component spells unless I guess you're Nigel. Because fine, okay. Nigel can breathe underwater. Nigel. Uh, but yeah, you're all back on the rock. You're underwater. Um, what do you all want to do? Nigel. Um, How far away did you say he was? He's about a round away. By the by rock. By rock standards, the okay. round away. I'll hold an action to throw a dagger at him. 
Nigel okay. will bonus action cast Divine Favor on himself and prepare his trusty pistol. This trusty magic oh, pistol. Excellent. Hopefully that works underwater. Uh Rogal's got a session with a million blades, which he's never used. Grabbed a couple of blades. He what? Rogal grabs his satchel of a billion blades. <laughs> okay, excellent. Sword? <laughs> he's gonna start rolling when he gets close. Sword, what would you like to do? Ah, I got nothing I can really use underwater. That doesn't okay. require vo- well, you got one so, breath. So if I, you want, you can roll. You I know, hand you, you a spell, dagger. <laughs> ah, I'll just keep holding. Okay. Hey, you know what? You know what? No, I'm going to ram the creature into Amethyst. You're going to try and crash into Amethyst, though? All right, can you roll me an animal handling check, Sword? As you, you take the reins and you're like, oh, no. Oh, no. Amethyst, no. Uh, you steer it directly toward Amethysto, uh, and he like opens his eyes open wide, like uh oh. Uh, as the boulder slams into him, he throws some stuff into the air, uh, and it looks like a bunch of like crab. No, yeah, in, I'm sorry, into the water above him that would have directly been in your course had Sword not steered the other way. Uh, and yeah, you guys see a bunch of like giant lobster creatures appear, just kind of out of thin air. Uh, and a bunch of like swarms of vicious looking fish. Uh, but they just all go by you as Sword steers past them and crashes into Amethysto. Uh, Sword, can you roll me uh, 60 tens? Tens? Yeah, 60 tens. Uh, you, you just slammed into Amethysto with a um, really fast rock. Alrighty. Uh, you see it, you hear a horrible cracking sound uh, as the rock hits Amethysto. Uh, can all of you roll me your attacks with disadvantage, unfortunately, being underwater? Uh, 17 and 17. Uh, 17, will that hit Amethysto? I don't know. It will hit Amethysto. Oof. <laughs> Nigel will go ahead and make that a 20. A 20 will hit Amethysto. Okay. Um, uh, I'm did, basically going to be using Thoth as a new. Did the bat die? Thing. The bat got left behind. Did, but no, it's not it, dead. Okay, it did not drop to zero hit points? Uh, no. Okay. Not yet, at least. Wow. Let, let me know if that happens. Done. Alrighty, I will let you know. Um, you hit for 19 points. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, you guys all just begin to unload on Amethysto. Um, and you can, you can hear, like, little cracks, but he's made of Amethyst. He's pretty tough. Um, and at uh, the end of that... Oh, I'm sorry, the four points from Jenny. Um, it seems that your gun works perfectly fine, by the way. Oh, Michelle. It's magic. Uh, that's supposed to be a disadvantage. So it's actually only 11, but the pressure doesn't. Oh, unfortunately, that 11 will not hit. Uh, dang. You it's guys... underwater and it's a jerk. What do you expect? Yep. Ahead, you guys see the end of the underwater portion as the tunnel aims upwards out of the out of the area. Um, and... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, it, the rock, almost at this point, or without even you needing to, steers itself up, and you guys emerge from the underwater portion. And for a moment, none of you can see Amethysto as it is very quiet, and the rock is just flying... Uh, at immense speeds just down this tunnel you can see thousands of feet ahead what looks like maybe like a finish line and then you see uh kind of crawling up over the front of the rock giant purple arms as amethysto looks to you all uh as he climbs up and he says unfortunately i cannot allow you to win this race and uh <laughs> All right, we got Amethysta now. Can everyone roll me initiative? Jesus Christ. Yep, that's about right. All right, Oof. Amethysto. Got a 15. Amethysto's going to go first. All right. Uh, all right. So you guys have, like, maybe 10 rounds or... What, what was that, Sword? First. 
All right, you're botting out a little bit. Let me know when. Let me know when you're back. You got about five rounds, actually. I didn't count your speed right. Yeah, I got no idea what you just said, man. Um, can you type in the chat if you have trouble with the connection? Am I good now? Yes. What would you need? No, no, I was saying it's like I'm first in the party initiative, too. Wow, what's <laughs> yeah, going on a, tonight? It's a time, right? Uh, Amethysto climbs up, uh, and he's pretty, like, Im menacing looking, and he looks like he's right on to uh, at home on top of one of these rocks. He moves with, with ease. Um, Sword, you're probably, unfortunately, the first one there. Like, you're right up front, you were steering the rock the whole time, unless Nigel would want to be ahead because of that crit. Nigel? I will be uh, adjacent betwixt them. All right, then uh, he's going to punch both of you. Uh, he goes to uh, punch with his uh, amethyst uh, fists, uh, which actually, that was incorrect. I the magic bonus on that. There we go. Uh, oh, good. He didn't even roll together. He's going to punch you, Nigel, as he uh, slams you uh, to 26. Oh, that hits. That'll be 16 points of magical bludgeoning damage. And then you roll a constitution saving throw as his uh, crystal and form kind of drains your very essence. No problem. Aye. He'll punch you a second time. 29. Oh my god. He's on fire. Uh, a 13 will fail, unfortunately. So that hit That's point my concentration for my spell. Oh, okay. Uh, and then for his other attack, can you roll? Oof. Oh. All right. So he drains you 20 HP, uh, and he turns toward you, Sword, uh, and goes, I am sorry, friends, but do my oh, I don't even care about you. And he punches you, actually. 16 is going to miss you, though. Yep. Uh, that's the end of his turn. We move to the next in the initiative order, uh, which is you, Sword. Oh, you know what, though? Uh, mm -hmm. Niji had a... Uh... Mm -hmm. Then you get that on this uh, constitution. Oh, I forgot to add my plus there. Oh, shit. That's a great point. Yeah. Uh, which actually I don't think can save the second one. Yeah, because uh, the three. Yeah, eight plus five is not going to get 15. All yeah, right. Uh, thought I'd just bring it up, though. No, it's a good call. Good call. Uh, it's always important. I think it's super important to always remind those features. People forget that stuff. Um, but it's super important. So, Sword, it's your move. Uh, what would you like to do? You're out of the water. You're flying toward the home stretch. Amethysto is punching the crap out of Nigel and you. But really, just Nigel so far. Is he ahead of us or behind us? He's on the rock with you. Because you hit him. And, oh, uh, oh. Yeah, he's on the rock. In that case, um... I will disperse my bliss and summon okay. my spiritual, uh, I mean, uh, my spirit guardians. The spirit guardians begin to <laughs> swirl around. But they have an the effect place. where they reduce the speed of the creature by half. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't think that matters right now, but if you knock him off or something, that'll be a big deal. Um, so that's going to be, uh, what does that say? A wisdom saving throw? Yes, sir. All right. He does have magical resistance, but he's got a negative one wisdom. So he's going to fail uh, and take 13 points of radiant damage. Um, all righty. And that is the end of Amethysto's turn. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the end of your turn. Jenny, yep. uh, what would you like? Or, yeah, Jenny. All right. Oh, you cast casting fairy fire. Um, and you get to pick the targets in that? No, uh... any creature. Okay. Um, I think you could probably do it, but you're going to get the rock, too. Are you okay with that? Uh, if I get the rock, it uh -huh. has to be a very bright violet color. Alrighty. The rock fails its saving throw and glows a very bright, light, bright, a very bright violet color. Uh, as does Amethyst. Oh, actually, what's the save? Wisdom? Uh... Or Dex. Dex, I see. Uh, Amethyst, though, is not dexterous, either. <laughs> he fails as well. And he now glows with fairy fire light. Is there anything else you'd like to do, Jenny? Dice rolling motion. <laughs> Dice rolling motion, as is the Galanodal uh, tradition. 
Um, Nigel and Chogal, you two, who would like to go first? What would you like to do? Um, All right, Nigel. Nigel is going to look at this boy and be like, Hey, step off as I command him to step off. Uh, this is a wisdom save? Uh, in... Do you believe so? Okay. Alright, he fails. <laughs> wow, damn. Uh, alrighty, he is very dumb. Uh, we move to... Is that the end of your turn, uh, Nigel? It is indeed. Alrighty. Uh, we move to the last initiative then. Chogal, what would you like to do? To the jump. Now, uh, this is not a charm effect, correct? No, it is not. Okay, cool. Super important. Uh, so, wait, Chogal, you uh, you then command him to jump? No. It's <laughs> okay. Sure. Uh, he fails that one, too. Oh, yeah. actually, wait, that should have advantage, not disadvantage. He gets a 16. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that got you? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so, um, oh, I screwed I everything up. This is only a 12. <laughs> okay. Uh, it is Amethysto's turn, then, at the end of your round. Uh, you guys have dealt a total of 60 damage to him, which unfortunately means uh, he might go berserk right now. Uh, as he is take is uh, below 60 hit points. He does not go berserk. Instead, he leaps off the rock. <laughs> Goodbye! <laughs> hey, uh, he uh. leaps off the rock. <laughs> wow, this is supposed to be a really brutal fight. Um, Sorry, can you roll me another 60 tens of damage? As he goes flying off the rock. Uh, Jesus Christ. Wait, who's rolling the damage? Oh, it should be Sword. Sorry, because Sword's piloting the rock. Sword gets the rock's damage. Another 28. Ooh. Amethyst still, like, shatters a little bit. Pieces of Amethyst just go everywhere. Uh, he's still alive, though, and he's, like, trying to pick himself up. Uh, I'm going to give him a deck save to see if he can catch on to your rope that's still dangling. But the odds are, like, zero. Um, Especially where he's running half speed. Yeah, he needs he needs to hit a DC 15 on his minus one. Holy shit! You look back as he's cracking against the ground, and Amethysto is still dragging behind you guys, hanging from a rope. Uh, that's the end of his turn, though. And spirit guardians. Uh, yeah, I mean, sword. You do an extra. You do some damage with spirit guardians. Uh, well, an extra twenty. Uh. -huh. What else would you like to do, Sword? He's dangling from a rope behind you guys. Uh, he looks really I, I'd beat I'd like up. to turn to I'd like to turn to Sword and say, "Wait, ho hold your." Say that again. You cut out. Your action. He's saying, "Hold your action." Do you do you hold your attack, Sword, or do you just attack? I'm just gonna keep this puppy going forward. Okay, you're just. Are you trying to make it go even faster? This rock is going real quick. Oh, but I'm gonna drag him down along the ground. Oh, you're trying so to scare him down. Every or? rock, every rock, every bump, he's going is going to hit him. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, what's this, uh, what'd you get? Uh, 16, 16, uh, oh 20. my gosh, you're on fire. Yeah, you are you steer the rock down. Um, it's going pretty quick. Uh, and it's skidding. It's almost like touching the ground again. It's getting real close to skidding and, and rocketing. Um, I mean, and sorry, and sparking and stuff, but not quite. Um, who's next in the initiative? Jenny? Yep. What uh, do you like to do? And still looks real bad. There's three turns left until we reach the finish line, right? Yes. So I'd like to convince Amethy so to hold on. And we're He's going to get him. To yeah, and we're going to get him to the finish line and we'll let him win. Okay. And for three turns, I just hold him there saying, don't worry, we'll let you win. We'll pull you up. We're going to get you across the finish you line. You a deception check then. Because I assume yep. that's what you're and doing. Just before we reach the finish line, a dark look ac comes across my face, and I cut the. Oh. I will also cut and. Betrayal. 
As I put it, I'm gonna say, Long live the king! Oh god! Can I just kick his face as he begins to fall as the rope's cut? <laughs> Alright, so, I, I, you guys are helping, uh, helping Jenny. Amethyst, let me roll his wisdom saving throw. Um, actually, let me roll it, see if he goes berserk in those six turns? Three, uh, three turns, he said, right? He goes berserk instantly, and let's go and blah! And then shatters into pieces. Oh, oh. Unfortunately, he goes goes mad uh, and breaks apart. Oh, you know, he probably just climbs up and tries to attack you, actually. I, I cut the rope as soon as he starts climbing. Oh, okay. Yeah, you guys just cut the rope, mock him viciously, and then he so breaks apart upon the ground behind you. And uh, with a whoosh, rocketing speed, do you try and slow down at all, Sword, or do you just keep going real fast? Yeah, I'll try to. Alright, do right a metal handling check. As you guys rocket across the finish line. I cast to full a... sight on myself. Uh, do you guys go misty step as soon as I cross the finish line to the, to off yeah. the, the rock? I you lay guys... on hands and tuck and roll. Sword, you can't hold on. It's too fast. The rock is going directly at a wall like 10 feet ahead of you. Do you leap off? Everyone else is bailing. Uh... Sword. Choke all Missy Sept did reflected Missy Step as well. No, I healed with my <laughs> lay on hands and tucked and roll. Okay, um, I'll, I'll thunder step off with Sword. Sword, are you willing to go or do you want to stay with the rock? <laughs> I'll make one more attempt to slow her down. Nah, at this and point, I, I, there's, there's no slowing the rock down. It's gonna hit the wall. Alright, yeah, I'll. I'll... You'll go with you'll say, go with Jenny or you're hanging out. I'll go with Jenny. Okay. There's a loud boom that echoes for three hundred feet. Yeah, well, there's think. a louder boom as the rock slams into the wall. <laughs> but yeah. Jenny but I do three D ten damage to the rock. Uh, does it That's die okay. before it hits? Absolutely not. No, this rock has like uh, eight hundred hit points. Um. It has disadvantage because of um a fairy. Well, <laughs> just saying, Jenny and Chogal, I need you both to roll spell casting checks. So for you guys, it's uh, both charisma, actually. No, yep. charisma, ability charisma. Ability uh, yeah, just ability checks. Alrighty, uh, Chogal, you're able to use your misty step to like brace your fall a little bit. You're gonna take half damage. Jenny, unfortunately, your thunder step just is not quite precise enough to help break your fall. Uh, you're, oh my god. Uh, Nigel, Jenny, and Sword are taking 47 points of bludgeoning damage as you go off the rock. Uh, you're gonna take half of that, Chogal, as you hit the ground with a kind of like a dramatic but painful skid. The boulder hits the wall, and there's no dust. Like, it just goes through, and there's a boulder shaped hole now in the wall as it is just continuing to go forward into infinity. Uh, I'm glad I cast False Life, or I'd be yeah. down. Yeah, and as you all kind of uh, catch yourselves, uh, the announcer calls out, Oh, and it seems the winners are the representatives of Prince Dwayne, the sedimentary sovereign. And there's cheers, and everyone's very happy. Uh, and the announcer says, uh, It seems Amethysto, the Ignean Amir, is nowhere to be seen, which means our prize goes to Dwayne. And there's more kind of cheering. Uh, and you see Dwayne uh, pick up a small, like, box and kind of flip it open. And he gets down on one knee uh, and uh, he begins to say, uh, uh, as he, he, the crowd goes totally silent as he does this. And the, bo the box is very clearly containing the prize. Uh, and he says, <clears throat> You, my sweet geode, make me all sedimentary inside. I have done everything I can to make the perfect event for this moment. And really, I just wanted to say that I love you, Princess es uh, Emeralda. Uh, and there's a very sweet, like, aw, of the audience and a light clapping. Uh, and Princess Emeralda is just kind of sitting there on top of a chair. Again, 
just a big rectangular chunk of emerald. Uh, and it just kind of like leans to the side a little bit, like the chair creaks. Uh, and there's <gasps> like a gasp. Uh, and really? And it kind of creaks a second time. I didn't know you felt that way about me too. And there's a very sweet moment as uh, you watch Dwayne go and hug what looks like an inanimate chunk of emeralds. Um, and you all watch this very, very, very sweet moment. Uh, the announcer not even deigning to break it with his witty banter. Uh, what, what are you guys all doing? Mange and lying on the ground dying in the case of Nichelle. Well, assuming the uh, Chogol heals us. Uh, I think I'm going <laughs> to go... Wait, does anyone... Wait, who's unconscious? Yeah, I'm unconscious. <laughs> uh, I think... Uh, <laughs> Nizel might be dead. You don't just know. Just blood splatters on the field as this dramatic and beautiful moment unfolds. Uh, all right, Chogal, who do you want to heal first? I'm sorry, Jenny, are you unconscious? She's barely alive. Two HP. Okay. So I was gonna heal um, Nizel first. All right. Uh, uh, sorry, can, can you roll me two death saving? Because there's a chance that you die. Uh, okay, you're good. You succeeded. You didn't crit fail and fail. So you're good. Uh, <laughs> Chogal is able to get to you and heal you before you would expire. And it looks like you were good yeah. anyway. Yeah, I'm, uh, but I'm, you missed I'm, the I'm, entire romantic I'm, moment. So yeah, like, I just missed tons. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, Everyone do, actually gets 10 HP each from my... Uh... Well, <laughs> with that, the crowd gives one last cheer, uh, and yeah, you guys have completed in your adventure. It's kind of awkward because you want to like talk to to Dwayne to get your money, but he seems very distracted. Obviously, he's just just proposed to this large inanimate chunk of emerald, um, and it, you look at what he gave. It's just like a piece of like twig that has been wound into like a ring. Uh, weird, what what strange things uh, brought people to his heart. Exactly. Hey, you know what is uh, when uh, Amethyst uh, uh uh-huh. cracked apart? Did he still have that crown? Yeah, you actually see like the kind of bent crown of uh, the Ignean Amir, which is 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 Amethyst now, uh, and his head, which is kind of just a broken chunk of Amethyst now, is kind of lying on the ground nearby. Uh, so if is he still like, alive, or is he just the talking no, head? Super dead. Chogol's gonna take the head as the trophy. Okay. And Sorry. I'll yeah. take the crown and a few pieces of his body, just for more experience. Alrighty. Did he have anything other than the crown on? No, not really. Uh, sorry, he had like a kind of like funky purple cape, but that's really... I definitely take the purple cape. <laughs> Alright. And or like with, exorbitantly too large for you. Yeah, it's way too big. It's huge. Like it fits <laughs> Chogol. That is how a cape is supposed to fit. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, but with that, our adventure comes to an end. Uh, I did not expect it to go that way, but you know that's totally fine. Sometimes that's how it goes. I believe that's our secondary catchphrase here on Pete and Jeremy's D time. <laughs> yeah, that's not how I thought that would go. Anyway, thank you all for playing. You've all gained. 200 Bartholomew bucks and a point of experience. So good job, everybody. Woo! Hi. Would 